If you've ever won a 100 meter dash in high school, you probably dreamed of becoming an Olympian. Cause the moment you get a taste of winning, you get hooked on it. And if you're really good, you're much less concerned about whatever happens in the other lanes. And you are focused on whatever the clock has to say whenever you cross the line. But what really happens to the fastest girl sprinters in high school? Cause only one girl in the nation can run the fastest time. And the truth is that high school track and field is not the end of a career, but rather the start of one. To make this list as the fastest sprinter, you have to run the fastest 100 meter time recorded in that year. That is both FAT and wind legal. And that time has to be posted on either milesplit or athletic.net. So here is a breakdown of the fastest girls every single year for the past 10 years. Some names that you've likely forgotten and others you're very familiar with. Cause it doesn't matter how you start, but it really matters how you finish. Starting off in 2021, Jasmine Montgomery out of the state of Texas ran 1127 to crown herself the fastest girl in the nation. She started her college career at Oregon, where as a freshman, she qualified for the NCAA championships, but she didn't make a final in the 100 or the 200 meter dash. She chose to transfer and now she runs for Florida in the SEC. And she hasn't yet won a medal in either the Pac-12 championships or the FEC championships, but perhaps 2023 will be her year. The year 2020 was a short track season for everybody, but it was Conondra Davis out of the state of Texas who ran the fastest 100 meter time as a junior running 1164. She ran faster as a senior and now competes for Georgia, but she had a shortened freshman season, perhaps due to injury. She hasn't made a final in the 100 or the 200 in the SEC yet, but 2023 should be her year because she's already broken the 23 second barrier in the 200. Yet 2018 and 2019 belong to Brianna Williams out of the state of Florida because she broke the high school national record running 1094 in the 100. She was the world junior champion at only the age of 16. That's a competition for athletes under the age of 20. And she chose to turn professional, skipping college and signing with Nike. She was born in America, but competes for Jamaica. And in 2021, she became an Olympic gold medalist in the four by 100 meter relay. Since turning pro, she also made the world indoor championship final in the 60 meter dash. But as one of the most decorated junior athletes ever, she's still waiting for a breakout performance in the outdoor season. And in 2017, it was Simone Mason, another athlete out of the state of Florida, who earned the title of the fastest girl. She ran 1124 as a senior and started her college career at Miami, where she won the ACC championship in the 200 meter dash as a freshman. Although she's fast in the 100, she can also run the 400 and contested that event at the World Junior Championships in 2018. After her sophomore year, she transferred to LSU and she won medals in the 100 and 200 in the SEC Championships. And in 2023, she's back on the track running with the Tiger Olympians Track Club, which is made up of LSU alumni. And 2016, continues the trend of fast high school juniors, where Katia Seymour, once again from the state of Florida, ran the fastest 100 in the nation. She ran 1126 and attended Florida State, where she would win the ACC indoor 200 meter dash as a freshman. She continued on to win the 100 outdoors and became a medal threat as the NCAAs from there. Interestingly enough, her senior year was a bit of a disappointment where she didn't qualify for the NCAAs outdoors, but her best finishes include a bronze medal in the indoor NCAA 60, as well as a fourth place finish outdoors in the 200. And she chose not to compete after college, marking the end of her track and field career. But 2015 belongs to Candace Hill out of the state of Georgia, who ran what was at that time 
a national high school record of 1098 in the 100. She was only a sophomore at the time and turned professional shortly thereafter. Skipping college entirely, she signed with ASICS back then, and she's still competing right now. But her personal best times are still the same ones she ran when she was a sophomore in high school, and she's still relatively young. But she's never represented the USA in a major international championship beyond the World Juniors. And 2014 continued the state of Florida's dominance when Kaylin Whitney ran 11-10 in the 100. And she also skipped college, signing professional the moment that she turned 17. With range up to the 400, she actually made the Olympic team in 2021 and ran on the American 4x4. But she never represented USA in a major international competition individually. And her high school PRs in the 100 and 200. And we last saw her on the track in 2022. So we may have seen the last that we will see of Kaylin Whitney. And last but certainly not least, it was Mary Beth St. Price out of the state of Colorado who ran 11:25 as a senior to lead the nation in the 100. She started her career at Oregon and did not qualify for the NCAAs and even struggled in conference in the Pac-12. But after two seasons, She's transferred to Colorado State in the Mountain West, where she would go on to win medals in both the Indoor 60 and the Outdoor 100. As a senior, she qualified for the NCAAs in the Indoor 60 Meter Dash, and that event has become her specialty as a professional. In 2023, she actually won a bronze medal at the World Indoor Championships in the 60 and finished second at the USA Meet. That is a full decade after her high school performances. So becoming the fastest sprinter in high school is a great accomplishment, but all it really means is that you have great talent and great potential. That doesn't mean a whole lot if the potential is never realized. And the states of Florida and Texas have dominated high school sprinting for the past decade. But no matter where you're from, Talent alone will not make you an Olympian. For those who turned professional early, the odds did not seem to work out in their favor. And successful women sprinters will tell you, especially the ones who did not make this list, that hard work can help you beat anyone who is talented, especially if you are willing to work hard enough. I'm Coach Rob, and thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more content like this, then please like and subscribe.